Welcome to Divorce Talk with Nicola Beer, a show dedicated to creating change and emotional healing for executives, professionals, and expats in the various stages of marriage breakdown and divorce. Discover insightful strategies to better manage your personal affairs and learn secrets to creating more happiness, love, and success in your life today. Hi and welcome. This is Nicola Beer and I'm thrilled you're listening to this episode because it's one very close to my heart. And I'm going to be talking to you about expectations. Expectations, when they're not being met on a consistent basis in a marriage, can often lead to disappointment, destruction and sometimes divorce. As our expectations of others, our relationship, our self and how we expect our life to be, directly impacts our happiness. So it's important to know if our expectations are too high. Knowing whether your expectations are too high or not is a tricky one. Something I have personally struggled with at times, both when in a relationship and when single, as I do have high standards, (laughs) to be honest with you. To the answer the question... Are my expectations too high? I use my intuition. I look at role models. I connect to what I value most. And I ask myself some powerful questions. For you today, I'm sharing some of my powerful questions. I hope you like them. And I'd love to know your feedback. The inspiration to write about high expectations today came from actually a lady I'm working with who shared, Nicola, I'm really annoyed at my friends. They say I expect too much and should be happy that my ex-husband is paying for the children's school and rent. I couldn't believe it. Happy? Why should I be happy? He's only paying what a father should be paying. And how can I be happy with the situation he left us in? Later, a man asked me, Nicola, isn't it normal to expect your wife to sleep in the same room as you and be happy to see you when you return home? And I say to them both, it's not for me to take sides and say yes or no to a couple's expectations. If they come for me for marriage counselling to save the marriage, I'm on the side of the relationship. It's always good, however, to really connect with what our expectations are and whether they are realistic. It's good to have a reality check on them. So I've come up with several questions, seven in fact, to know and ask yourself so you can assess whether your relationship expectations are too high. So number one is ask yourself, can I meet my own expectations? If not, they're definitely too high. If yes, then at least you know that what you're expecting is possible. And the next assessment is to look at whether your partner can meet them, which is number two. Is your partner capable of being what you want them to be? Everyone has their unique personality, talents, resources, abilities. Having a clear understanding of what your partner is and what your partner is not will help you to be more realistic in terms of what you ask from him or her. For instance... Some people are great at making conversations and effortlessly entertain, whilst others find it more difficult to socialise. Some take initiative, lead and plan everything. Others are more easygoing and prefer to go with the flow and see what happens. Some are better at offering practical support as opposed to emotional support. Some are intellectually stimulating, whereas others are physically stimulating. Perhaps your partner really shines in some areas, but falls short in others. The key here is to notice the whole picture. What are the positives and the negatives? If there are several positives that balance out the negatives, perhaps you can overlook them and let go of some expectations. If the negatives are too high, it can be worth considering if they make you happy long term. Do you know... Anyone else that meets these expectations is number three. Have you got role models or other people that you know that meet the expectations that you're looking for? 
If yes, great. And this has to be in real life, not in romantic comedies or sitcoms where you see the perfect person and they're acting perfectly. And realistic, do you know people that meet the expectations that you have? If not, then it might be time to assess whether they're too high. If you move from relationship to relationship, trying to find just the right person to meet all of your criteria, you will most likely be disappointed time and time again. If you are looking for the right partner or in a relationship, it's really important to be clear on what's important and non-negotiable and where you can be flexible. For example, similar family values may be an area where you're not willing to compromise on how clean and tidy they are, or whether they like an activity that you're interested in, may be less of a big deal. It can be useful to list out your non-negotiable expectations and share them, otherwise they'll keep coming up. Number four, to know whether your expectations are too high, is do you find yourself disappointed often? Take a minute and think about how frequently you get disappointed whether you are in a relationship or dating. Is it all the time or occasionally? How often have you actually had your expectations met? Let's face it, it's exhausting trying to get someone to meet our expectations and change their behaviour. When we fixate on it, we put ourselves on an emotional roller coaster of continuous hope and disappointment, as well as a power struggle as we are attempting to control their behaviour. If this is happening for you, it can be far more powerful to work on yourself instead of waiting them to change. Look at why you get triggered and irritated by their behaviour and work on resolving that. Question yourself, is it worth getting upset about? Question yourself, what is really going on with me here? Then ask yourself, Will it really benefit the relationship if I bring this up? If I start moaning that they're not meeting my expectations? Will it help the relationship or will it hinder the relationship? Is it possible for you to let go so that you can avoid a battle? Number five question to ask yourself to know if your expectations are too high is Have you communicated your expectations? A clear sign your expectations could be too high is that you are hesitant to share them with others, those that will give you an honest opinion anyway. If you're too embarrassed to share, I expect them to pay for everything or they should move happily with me and do as I say, then you need to evaluate why. If you're married, it's critical to communicate clearly your expectations to your partner and be patient if asking for a new change. Often, we don't say what we want and then get frustrated when they feel short. Then often, to make matters even worse, we still don't say anything until we finally explode and say, I've had it. By then, we've already mentally checked out. So it's really important to communicate your expectations, to know what they are, and in a non-obtrusive way. Number six is, do you fear lowering your expectations? If you're holding high expectations in fear of bad things happening, now is the right time to recognise that people will always do what they want to do, regardless of your expectations and wishes. People change because they want to change. It's that simple. If we expect people to always behave in such a way that our buttons won't be pushed, we are dreaming. I believe people, circumstances and events are put in our lives to push our buttons, to reveal to us where we need to grow and what needs to be healed. It gives us an opportunity to take responsibility for our reactions and free our baggage. And the last one, number seven, is are you willing to give as much as you expect to receive? This question requires a lot of self-honesty and reflection, but it's well worth the analysis. Look at what you provide your partner with in terms of support, resources, nurturing, energy and effort. Then ask yourself, do I expect more than I am prepared to give? Not only is it unfair to have high give-take imbalances in relationships, it can also ruin them. 
As when one, one person is constantly giving, they can start to build up resentment, which causes distance. In summary, we all have to know what behaviour we will accept and what we won't. These are not expectations, but boundaries. What behaviour will we accept and not attempt to change in our partner? Can you live with someone being messy without nagging them to tidy up? Can you be with someone who is never on time? Can you love your spouse with their faults? Then there is the more serious stuff. Can you live with cheating, lying, excessive spending, gambling or drinking? Putting friends or work ahead of family. Deciding yes or no to these and other issues are examples of personal boundaries that you get to set. If you like this, then I really recommend you check out one of my free ebooks. I have the seven secrets to saving your marriage, I have ways to protect children through divorce, and I have the ten steps to creating a new life after divorce of actions that you can take now. All those are available at www.purepeacecoaching.com. From my heart to yours, thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you for listening to Divorce Talk with Nicola Beer. If you have enjoyed the program, please leave a rating and review on iTunes so more people dealing with marriage breakdown and divorce get the support they need. If you want more great free resources, such as secrets to a happier relationship, moving on fast after divorce, or tips on parenting through divorce, be sure to visit www.purepeacecoaching.com today.